Saint Augustine commentary on Psalm 50 following. And call thou upon me in the day of your tribulation, and I will draw you forth, and you shall glorify me. Verse 15. For thou oughtest not to rely on your powers, all your aids are deceitful. Upon me call thou in the day of tribulation, I will draw you forth, and you shall glorify me. For to this end I have allowed the day of tribulation to come to you, because perchance if you were not troubled, you would not call on me. But when you are troubled, you call on me. When you call upon me, I will draw you forth. When I shall draw you forth, you shall glorify me, that you may no more depart from me. A certain man had grown dull and called in fervor of prayer and said, Tribulation and grief I found, and on the name of the Lord I called. He found tribulation as it were some profitable thing. He had rotted in the sloth of his sins. Now he had continued without feeling. He found tribulation to be a sort of casting and cutting. I found, he says, tribulation and grief, and on the name of the Lord I called. And truly, brethren, tribulations are known to all men. Behold, those afflictions that abound in mankind. One afflicted with lust bewails, another smitten with bereavement mourns, another exiled from country grieves and desires to return, deeming sojourning intolerable. Another's vineyard is hailed upon, he observes his labors, and all his toil spent in vain. When can a human being not be made sad, an enemy he finds in a friend? What greater misery in mankind? These things all men do deplore and grieve at, and these are tribulations. In all these they call upon the Lord, and they do rightly. Let them call upon God, he is able either to teach how it must be born, or to heal it when born. He knows how not to suffer us to be tried above that we are able to bear. 1 Corinthians 10.13 <coughs> Let us call upon God even in those tribulations, but these tribulations do find us, as in another psalm is written, helper in tribulations, which have found us too much. There is a certain tribulation which we ought to find. Let such tribulations find us. There is a certain tribulation which we ought to seek and to find. What is that? The above-named felicity in this world, abundance of temporal things, that is not indeed tribulation. These are the solaces of our tribulation. Of what tribulation? Of our sojourning. For the very fact that we are not yet with God, the very fact that we are living amid trials and difficulties, that we can't be without fear, is tribulation. For there is not that peace which is promised us. He that shall not have found this tribulation in his sojourning does not think of going home to his fatherland. This is tribulation, brethren. Surely now we do good works when we deal bread to the hungry, home to the stranger and the like. Tribulation even is this. For we find pitiful objects upon whom we show pity, and the pitiful case of pitiful objects makes us compassionate. How much better now would it be with you in that place where you find no hungry man whom you may feed, where you find no stranger whom you may take in, 
no naked man whom you may cover, no sick man whom you may visit, no litigant whom you may set at one. For all things in that place are most high, are true, are holy, are everlasting. Our bread in that place is righteous, our drink there is wisdom, our garment there is immortality, our house is everlasting in the heavens, our steadfastness is immortality. Does sickness come over? Doth weariness weigh down to sleep? No death, no litigation. There, peace, quiet, joy, righteousness. No enemy has entrance, no friend falls away. What is the quiet there? If we think and observe where we are, and where he that can't lie has promised that we are to be, from his very promise we find in what tribulation we are. This tribulation no one finds, but he that shall have sought it. You are whole, see if you are miserable, for it is easy for him that is sick to find himself miserable. When you are whole, see if you are miserable, that you are not yet with God. Tribulation and grief I found, and on the name of the Lord I called. Immolate, therefore, to God the sacrifice of praise. Praise Him promising, praise Him calling, praise Him exhorting, praise Him helping, and understand in what tribulation you are placed. Call upon Him, you shall be drawn forth, you shall glorify, shall abide. But see what follows, my brethren, for now some one are or other, because God had said to him, Immolate to God the sacrifice of praise, and had enjoined in a manner this tribute, did meditate to himself and said, I will rise daily, I will proceed to church, I will say one hymn at matins, another at vespers, a third or fourth in my house, Daily I do sacrifice the sacrifice of praise and immolate to my God. Well, you do indeed if you do this, but take heed, lest now thou be careless, because now you do this. And perchance your tongue bless God and your life curse God. O my people, says to you the God of gods, the Lord that spoke, calling the earth from the rising of the sun, and to the setting. Thou yet you are placed amid the tares. Matthew thirteen twenty five. Immolate the sacrifice of praise to your God and render to him your prayers. But take heed lest you live ill and chant well. Wherefore this? For unto the sinner says God, Why do you tell out my judgments? and takes my covenant in your mouth. Verse 16 You see, brethren, with what trembling we say these words. We take the covenant of God in our mouth, and we say these words. We take the covenant of God in our mouth, and we preach to you the instruction and judgment of God. And what says God to the sinner? Why do you? Doth he then forbid preachers that be sinners? And where is that? What they say do, but what they do do not? Matthew 23, 3. Where is that whether in truth or on occasion Christ be preached? Philippians 1, 18. But these words were said, lest they should feel that here, from whomsoever it be that they hear, not that they should be without care, that speak good words and do evil deeds. Now therefore, brethren, you are without care. If you hear good words, ye hear God, through whomsoever it be that you may hear. But God would not dismiss without reproof them that speak. 
lest with their speaking alone, without care for themselves, they should slumber in evil life, and say to themselves, For God will not consign us to perdition, through whose mouth he has willed that so many good works, good words would be should be spoken to his people. Nay, but hear what you speak, whoever you are that speaks, and thou that wit be heard yourself first, hear yourself, and speak what a certain man does speak in another psalm, I will hear what in me speaks the Lord God, for he shall speak peace to his people. What am I then that hear not what in me he speaks, and will that other hear what through me he speaks? I will hear first, will hear, and chiefly I will hear what speaks in me the Lord God, for he shall speak peace to his people. Let me hear and chasten my body, and to servitude subject it, lest perchance to others' preachings myself be found a castaway. 1 Corinthians 9.27 Why do you tell out my judgments? Wherefore to you what profits not you? He admonishes him to hear, not to lay down preaching, but to take up obedience. But you, why do you take my covenant in their mouth? But you hate instruction. Verse 17 Thou hatest discipline. When I spare, you sing and praisest. When I chasten, you murmur. As thou, when I spare, I am your God, and when I chasten, I am not your God. I rebuke and chasten those whom I love. Revelation 3.19 But you hate instruction and hast thrown my sayings behind you. The words that are said through you, you throw behind you, and you have thrown my sayings behind you to a place where they may not be seen by you but may load you, and you have thrown my sayings behind you. If you saw a thief, you consented unto him, and with adulterers you made your portion. Verse 18. Lest perchance you should say, I have not committed theft, I have not committed adultery. What if he pleased you that has committed? Have you not with the very pleasing consented? Have you not by approval made your portion with him that has committed? For this is, brethren, to consent with the thief, and to make him an adulterer your portion. For even if you commit not and approvest what is committed, you are an accessory in the deed. For the sinner is praised in the longing of, of his soul, and he that does iniquity shall be blessed. Thou dost not evil things, you praise evil doers. For is this a small evil? Thou made your portion with adulterers. <coughs> your mouth has abounded in malice, and your tongue has embraced deceit. Verse 19. Of the malevolence and deceit, brethren, of certain men he speaks, who by adulation, though they know what they hear to be evil, yet lest they offend those from whom they hear, not only by not reproving, but by holding their peace, do consent. Too little is it that they do not say, You have done evil. But they even say, you have done evil well, and they know it to be evil, but their mouth abounds in malice and their tongue embraces deceit. Deceit is a sort of guile in words, of uttering one thing, thinking another. He says not your tongue has committed deceit or perpetrated deceit, but in order to point out to you a kind of pleasure taken in the very evil doing, he has said, hath embraced. It is too little that you do it. You are delighted to, you praise openly, 
you laugh to yourself. Thou dost push to distraction a man heedlessly putting forth his faults, and knowing not whether they be false. Thou that know it to be a fault, sayest not. Whither are you rushing? If thou were to see him heedlessly walk in the dark, when you knew a well to be, and where to hold your peace, of what sort would you be? Would you not be set down for an enemy of his life? And yet if he were to fall into a well, not in soul but in body, he would die. He does fall headlong into his vices, he does expose before you his evil doings. You know them to be evil and praisest and laughest to yourself. Oh, that at length he were to be turned to God at whom you laugh, and whom you would not reprove, and that he were to say, Let them be confounded that say to me, Well, well. Sitting against your brother, you detracted. Verse 20. And this sitting does belong to that whereof he has spoken above in, has embraced. For he that does anything while standing or passing along, does it not with pleasure, but, but if he for this purpose sits, how much leisure does he seek out to do it? That very evil detraction you were making with diligence, you were making sitting, you would thereon be wholly engaged, you were embracing your evil, you were kissing your craftiness. And against your mother's son you laid a stumbling block. Who is mother's son? Is it not brother? He would repeat then the same that he has said above, your brother. Hath he intimated that any distinction must be perceived by us? Evidently, brethren, I think a distinction must be made. Brother against brother does detract, for example's sake, as thou, for instance, one strong and now a doctor and scholar of some weight, does detract from his brother, one perchance that is teaching well and walking well, but another is weak against him he lays a stumbling block by detracting from the former. For when the good are detracted from by those that seem to be of some weight and to be learnt, the weak fall upon the stumbling block who as yet know not how to judge. Therefore this weak one is called mother's son, not yet, not yet fathers, still needing milk and hanging on the breast. He is born as yet in the bosom of his mother the church, he is not strong enough to draw near to the solid food of his father's table. But from the mother's breast he draws sustenance, unskilled in judging, inasmuch as yet he is animal and carnal. For the spiritual man judges all things. 1 Corinthians 2.15 But the animal man perceives not those things which are of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. 1 Corinthians 2.14 To such men, says the Apostle, I could not speak until you, as unto, uh, as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, as to babes in Christ, I gave you milk to drink, not meat. For you were not able, but not even now are you able. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 and 2 A mother, I have been to you, as is said in another place. I became a babe among you, even as a nurse cherishing her own children. Not a nurse cherishing not a nurse nursing children of others, but a nurse cherishing her own children. For there are mothers who, when they have born, give to nurses. They that have born cherish not their children, because they have given them to be nursed. 
but those that cherish, cherish not their own, but those of others. But he, but he himself had borne, he was himself cherishing. To no nurse did commit what he had borne, for he had said, Of whom I travail again until Christ be formed in you. Galatians 4.19 He did cherish them and gave milk, but there were some, as it were, learned and spiritual men who detracted from Paul. His letters indeed, say they, are weighty and powerful, but the presence of his body, weak and speech, contemptible. 2 Corinthians 10.10 10. He says himself in his epistle that certain his detractors had said these words. They were sitting and were detracting against their brother and against that their mother's son to be fed with milk. They were laying a stumbling block and against your mother's son you laid a stumbling block. These things have you done, and I held my tongue. Verse 21. Therefore the Lord our God shall come and shall not keep silence. Now these things have you done, and I held my tongue. What is I held my tongue? From vengeance I have desisted, my severity I have deferred, patience to you I have prolonged, your repentance I have long looked for. You have imagined iniquity that I shall be like unto you. You have imagined that I shall be like unto you while you will not be like unto me. For be, he says, perfect, even as your Father, which is in the heavens, who makes his Son to rise on the good and evil. Matthew 5, 48 and 45. Him you would not copy who gives good things even to evil men, in so much that sitting thou dost detract even from good men. I will reprove you when God manifest shall come, I will guard and shall not keep silence. I will reprove you. And what to you shall I do in reproving you? What to you shall I do? Now yourself you see not. I will make you see yourself, because if you should see yourself and shouldest displease yourself, you would please me. But because not seeing yourself you have pleased yourself, you will displease both me and yourself, me when you shall be judged, yourself when you shall burn. But what to you shall I do? He says, I will set you before your face. For why should you escape yourself? At your back you are to yourself. You see not yourself, I make you see yourself. What behind your back you have put before your face will I put? You shall see your uncleanness, not that you may amend, but that you may blush. But understand these things, you that forget God. Verse 22. See how he cries and keeps not silence, spares not. You had forgotten the Lord, did not think of your evil life. Perceive how you have forgotten the Lord. Ness at length he sees like a lion, and there be known to deliver. What is like a lion? Like a brave one, like a mighty one, like him whom none can withstand. To this he made reference when he said, Lion, for it is used and for praise, it is used also for showing evil. The devil has been called Lion. Your adversary, he says, like a roaring lion, goes about seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5 8. May it not be that whereas he has been called Lion, because of savage fierceness, Christ has been called lion for wondrous mightiness. And where is that the lion has prevailed of the tribe of Judah? Revelation 5.5 5. 
Sacrifice of praise shall glorify me. Verse 23. How shall sacrifice of praise glorify me? Assuredly, sacrifice of praise does no wise profit evil men, because they take your covenant in their mouth and do damnable things that displease you your eyes. Straightway he says, even to them this I say, sacrifice of praise shall glorify me. For if you live ill and speak good words, not yet do you praise. But again, if, when you begin to live well, to your merits thou dost ascribe your living well, not yet do you praise. Therefore the publican went down justified rather than that Pharisee. Therefore hear ye that live well, hear ye that live ill. Sacrifice of praise shall glorify me. No one offers me this sacrifice and is evil. I say not, let there not offer me this any one that is evil, but no one does offer me this that is evil. For he that praises is good, because if he praises, he does also live well, because if he praises, not only with tongue he praises, but life also with tongue does agree. And there is the way whereby I will show him the salvation of God. In sacrifice of praise is the way. What is the salvation of God? Christ Jesus. And how in sacrifice of praise to us is shown Christ because Christ with grace came to us. These words says the Apostle, But I live now not I, but Christ lives in me, but that in flesh I live, in faith I live of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 Acknowledge then sinners that there would not need physician if they were whole. Matthew 9, 12. For Christ died for the ungodly. Romans 5, 6. When then they acknowledge their ungodliness and first copy that publican, that publican saying, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Luke 18, 13. Show wounds, beseech physician, and because they praise not themselves but blame themselves, so that he that glories not in himself but in the Lord may glory. 1 Corinthians 1.31 They acknowledge the cause of the coming of Christ, because for this end he came, that he might save sinners. For Jesus Christ came, he says, into this world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. 1 Timothy 1.15 Further, those Jews boasting of their work, thus the same apostle does rebuke in saying that they to grace belong not, who to their merits and their works thought that reward was owing. Galatians 5, 4 He therefore that knows himself to belong to grace does know what is Christ and what is Christ because he needs grace. If grace it is called, gratis it is given. If gratis it is given, not any merits of time have preceded that it should be given.